Hey guys, in this video, we are looking at another AWS platform architecture for Chen AI and for the specific use case of searching for chop or chop search experience. I'm excited to see this. I'm going to give you my thoughts as an engineer on this and let me know in the comments what you think. Also, the original video is in the description. So if you want to re listen to it yourself, so let's get into it. All right, let's get started. Hi, I'm Andrea from AWS. And I'm Bill from Healthy Careers, and this is my architecture. Oh, okay. Ooh, what are we already seeing here? A lot of Bedrock, a lot of Gen AI. ECS, EC2. Okay, okay, S3. Oh, I'm excited. Great to have you here, Bill. Thank you. So let's dive into the architecture which you built on AWS, which focuses on generative AI enabled job search engine. Tell us a little bit more about the use case. Sure. Uh, Healthy Careers is a, a career services job for healthcare professionals. And one of the main features on our site is searching for jobs when, when doctors and nurses are looking for new, new opportunities. Fantastic. And let's walk through a workflow. Say I'm a practitioner, I'm going into your website, What's the first thing that happens? Yeah, so our user will come to the Healthy Careers website and when they invoke a, a search, they will go to the, our, our new chatbot and enter into the prompt uh, a query that's relevant to their search and that gets passed into our cloud infrastructure where it's grabbed by our .NET application on ECS. Okay, so you use Elastic Container Service. Yep. And then how do you ensure that that practitioner is an authentic user? Yeah. That okay, interesting. So. They're not using a Lambda function or something like this in the background. They're using actually a Dockerized application here. So this is a, this is a container. And so in the background here, this there's somewhere ECR, the container registry as well, where this then gets pulled and gets um, gets started. That query is then passed on to Bedrock. Here we're using Claude 2 LLM mm. to uh, check prompt injection as well as sanitize the prompt and do some geolocation uh, features. That enriched and enhanced prompt is then passed back to our net controller. Fantastic. Okay, so there, of course, you don't want to have any like code, code injection or SQL injection into that, uh, into the query from the user and they use the actual Gen AI as a counter initiative to clean it and to check if, uh, if the user is, is a real user or if they're doing st strange stuff, right? So it's cool. So you're using the power of generative AI to do that. Why did you settle on Claude 2? So we tested a few different ones. Claude was uh, great for the job. And one of the great things Claude did was it would, it would help us take um, geolocation terms such as, you know, Southern California and um, convert it to latitude and longitude for us. Oh, fantastic. So, so now you've authenticated wow. I'm a genuine user. What's the next thing that happens? It's interesting. A lot of people talk about Claude 2 and or Claude in general. There are alternatives to um, ChatGPT, right? So there are good alternatives and Claude, okay. And it's actually a very cool use case. How difficult was it before that to generate actual coordinates from just a text location? It's, wow, that's cool. Yeah, our enriched prompt is then passed on to Bedrock one more time. Mm -hmm. um, and here now we're using Titan for uh, embedded prompt. And then, uh, yeah, the same kind of rationale. It seems like you're using a different LLM. Why did you settle on Titan? Right. So this one we're using for um, to vectorize the prompt, and we chose it because of speed and cost. Okay, speed and cost. Mm -hmm. So now you okay. have that vectorized the search search specific, and I see geolocation as well. What happens next? Great. Our uh, enriched query comes out of Titan, mm -hmm. and um, we grab. We then move to our. SQL uh, instance sitting on on EC2. And here we grab the user's search history if there is one. If it's the first time they visit the site, we do not have a history. So, so, so there is not directly a answer from here, right? So this this actual Gen AI will not get data back to the back to the person. This will actually enhance that and then send this to or, or get information from an SQL database. It's, it's interesting. 
So the, it's not nothing like DynamoDB or something. Cool. And extend it, enhance that search experience, right? So you have the, say, chat history plus the vectorized search. What do you do with that? So now we've got, we're collecting our data. We have our enriched prompt, we have our chat history, and we move over to our knowledge base. Um, we have Elasticsearch running on EC2, and this is our full content knowledge base. Okay. And why did you settle on Elasticsearch on EC2? So we were already Elasticsearch uh, shop. We already had that talent in-house, and our content was already stored there. These are all of our job descriptions. Okay, so it's just inherited, inherently very easy kind of transition to that. And then that search engine or, say, the Elasticsearch then have past history, right? So it's job history. How do you update that with new job postings that are coming on the market? Yeah, good question. Every so again, just to clarify, this is in here this is the index data right these this is where they always uh, call this the knowledge base this is where the data is coming in and where all the job ads are getting stored every six hours we have a process that's running offline and it's grabbing all of our rss feeds all of our apis mm -hmm. and all of our jobs from partners and other sites and we pull those into an amazon s3 bucket where we have a document store then pass those through bedrock where we vectorize the content base and that content base is stored in Elasticsearch. So the same process? Same process. Universe. Okay, so vectorize and then put it, how often do you do this? This is every six hours. Six hours, so the, then that, that contains relevant job postings then, right? Correct. So now you have that, uh, what specifically are you searching in Elasticsearch? So now we're searching the job descriptions and we're taking the user's query, as I mentioned, something mm -hmm. like cardiology jobs, we have the geolocation, we search the content base and we're pulling out six um, relevant art, uh, job descriptions, uh, job postings that are uh, relevant to that search. I see. So you have these six, you know, results. And what then, what do you do with that information? Okay, so this is where the, the fun happens, right? Okay. We've got the prompt, we've got the six results, we've got our chat history, and we send it all to Bedrock one more time. And here we're using Claude 2 again. And we are taking it and creating a generative AI response that is then using Bedrock Streaming to pass that data back to our user where they finally see their job. So they're miss we're missing something here, right? Can you see this? Like these six, these six results, where do they come from? How, who selects these results? This is omitted from this, right? So there is something here that actually then once, because this is only every six hours, this indexing or this vectorization. So something is here that actually then gets the data or gets the information from here, gets the information from here, and then sends that into Claude, right? So that something is missing here, some, some block, because your data flow needs to go somewhere, right? You, you have this here, this, also, yeah, also this step, this, because this Gen AI is going to send the data out. So there must be something here as well, some block here, who then takes the data and sends the results into your SQL database or does something here. So I'm, I'm, it looks a lot like something is omitted from this. But generally, it's a cool, it's a cool use case. It's a cool process. That's fantastic. And then I see you have Claude 2. Yes. Tell us about the rationale decision making for setting that on Claude 2. We tried a few different LLMs. Mm -hmm. Claude 2 was right for the for this purpose. And we are actually now we're testing Claude 3 just came out and we're okay. testing that. Fantastic. I hope to roll it out soon. And uh, as a user then, as a practitioner, what benefit do they see using this architecture? Yeah. So. One is ease of use, you know, a traditional job search mm -hmm. is going to have a lot of radio buttons and sliders to, to narrow your criteria, but this allows users mm -hmm. to use just a, you know, a, 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 just an easy NLP, natural language um, query for their job. That's fantastic. And do you have any success um, indicators for whether that search is successful? How do you view it? How so do you measure it? We view success as further interactions with the job. Maybe they are iterating and asking mm -hmm. questions about a specific um, one of the six postings. We know they have interest. Um, we are also 
monitor and log when users actually apply for a job. I see. And we're seeing over 80% uh, interaction rate with the results that come back. I love it. Thank you so much for walking us through this architecture. Fantastic use of generative AI. Great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Very nice. So one thing, and you can see this also in the last video, we saw this with Gen AI, they're using now here through AWS Bedrock, but they're using models like Claude 2 or is it Claude 3 then next? Because this way you don't have to send the data somewhere, right? Apple said they're going to use ChatGPT and send your data to ChatGPT. This way, if you do it this way, then let me, let me, let's quickly get back. If you do it this way, then here, because these, this here, this one here, this one here, this one here, it's all private, right? So nobody is going to take the data. Nobody is going to have access to that data. And that is a big thing for companies. So I'm very, very happy that there are also other models, other algorithms trained than just um, yeah, ChatGPT. And Cl I heard time and time before, uh, Claude is actually very good. So I, I need to check that out. Okay, I hope you like this. Let me know in the comments what you think. Would you have changed something? Do you find these new Gen AI use cases also the, that interesting? Because I like, I'm, for me, this is really cool. I am looking forward to this. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.